Hi there, my name's Grant Eamons. I'm the owner of Designer Eco Tiny Homes. Today we're going to have a look at our solar trailers and answer some of those questions that uh, we get a lot coming through over our phone and our email. So first of all, here we have a four panel solar trailer with an automatic generator. Now, it's plugged in at the moment to this 7.2 metre lifestyle series tiny house. It does have air conditioning, so we're going to show you how that works with our solar trailer. So come on, let's take a quick look. You'll see here as we approach the solar trailer, there are four solar panels in total. They are 390 watts. So if we times that all together, that's the total amount of watts that you have for this particular solar trailer. Now, obviously the more solar panels you have, the faster the batteries charge. We do sell a six panel solar trailer, which means essentially it charges the batteries faster. We do now use lithium batteries. We use two Pylon Techs. They are 3.55 kilowatt hours each. So if we combine that, we have a, a, a total battery storage bank of 7.1 kilowatt hours. So if you want to know how long does it last, it isn't I can't really say an exact time because it depends how much power you're using. If you're using a lot of power, you will obviously uh, use the batteries quicker, but if you're only using a few lights, it lasts a long time. So it's a very difficult question for us to answer when people say, how long does it last? Well, it depends on how much power are you using. So you have at your disposal 7.1 kilowatt hours of battery storage. So there's, you, you've got to understand, depending on what you're using, depends how uh, fast that'll charge. Now on a sunny day, typically speaking, this house here, this tiny house behind us, running air conditioning, all the lights on, no problems at all. It'll be no problems at all. Once the sun goes down, you'll notice that uh, you'll, you'll start eating into your battery bank. So what happens is while the sun's shining, there's a golden rule with all solar, with solar being off grid, Use the power while the sun shines. So if you're in a cold environment, it's good to turn your air conditioning on while the sun is still shining. So sort of maybe towards the latter part of the day, uh, don't wait for it to be nighttime. Start warming the house up with the air conditioner in the afternoon while the sun's still shining to help out your battery bank. If you come, say if it's a weekender and you come after hours, you come late on a Friday night, it's just what it is, you'll just use more power to start up that air conditioning system. So it still works for that. If you do run your air conditioning through the night, it should last fine as well. However, that's why we sell all our solar trails with a backup generator. There's two types. We have a manual generator or an automatic generator. If it's a manual, you essentially, once your battery gets low, you have to monitor it. Then you can just come out and you pull the cable and the generator starts and that'll support the battery bank uh, th through using the solar trailer. Now with, with the automatic, essentially we program the solar trailer so that once the battery gets to a certain uh, depth of discharge, the computer senses that and it automatically turns that on. It charges the batteries back up. Once it gets to about 80%, it turns it back off again. So it's on and off automatically. So you don't have to touch it. All you gotta do is put fuel in it and do some regular maintenance on the generator. And that's a much more, uh, I would highly recommend that situation, especially if you're gonna rent out your tiny house. You don't wanna have to explain this to customers or tenants. Uh, go with this system or it's just a nice thing to have. If you do live in it permanently full time, then there's no issues there uh, doing the manual generator because you're going to learn to understand your system. You're going to know how much you, you use, how much power. With the actual battery bank and the inverter, that's the essentially piece of equipment that takes the 48 volt battery and converts it into 240 volt power. That has Bluetooth activation, so you can essentially link that to your phone. It, has, it comes with an app so that you can monitor how much battery you're using at any one time and you can see where your battery's at. So there is a, a way to actually easily look at your battery and monitor it. And again, if you're living in this tiny house permanently, you're gonna get to know how the system works where you know when you would have to turn it off. So a very common question we get asked is, oh, what happens, how long will the battery last if we have overcast conditions? Again, the same answer applies. If you are using a lot of power, like your air conditioning's on, 
running uh, all your computers or um, you know, it depends what, what you've got happening in the house, you're gonna drain the battery down uh, quicker versus if somebody just has the lights on, that's not gonna be too bad at all. So it really depends. How long does it last? Depends on how much power you use. It's not, a, it's not just a, a given question. How long does it take to recharge the batteries with the generators? Another very common question. Again, it's almost impossible for us to tell because if you're still running a lot of power in the house, the generator's gonna, uh, the generator's gonna uh, create a lot of energy which you'll send through to the house but it'll, and any excess power, it'll put it back into the battery bank. So if you wanna charge your battery bank up faster, if you've noticed that the automatic generator is turned on, you're like, oh, I've run out of battery, it's, it's sort of supporting it, it's at night or it's overcast, I'm like, okay, let's maybe turn off some of these appliances, something like that, and that'll make it go faster. If you, if you need to continue doing your work on your computer or whatever it is you're doing, uh, you just have to let the generator run a little bit longer because it's going to both be supporting the power that you're consuming in the tiny house plus it's going to be supporting the battery bank. So if you're choosing to go off grid in one of these tiny houses, you've got to remember it's not like being plugged into mains power in a normal regular suburban setting. We do supply the power, but it's only as good as what the sun provides. It's a solar system, it, it depends on the sun. It just doesn't automatically give you power. It's, um, it's very much dependent on the sun. So the more the sun shines, the more free energy you get. If you don't get any sun, you have to support it with a generator. So that's, that's a sort of, uh, it's, a, it's a balance between when you use your power, and when you have to use the, uh, the petrol to essentially recharge it up. So in most cases, most people find that you can run your tiny house and live permanently in a tiny house using one of these solar trails. The four panel is a great option. If you want the batteries to charge up faster or you're in a low light situation, maybe or in, in uh, Tasmania, places like that, or Melbourne, they do tend to, we do tend to have a lot more of our customers choose to get the six panel. It just assists in recharging the batteries faster. So hopefully that's answered a couple of those questions. We're gonna go through a few more. We're just gonna have a quick look at the whole solar trailer here as a package. We essentially, as you saw on the other side, you have the four solar panels. Then you have these two uh, boxes here. On this side is the battery bank. There's two lithium uh, batteries in here and I'll open that up so you can have a look there. And obviously we've got the generator at the back here. So you'll see in here, when you receive your solar trail, you'll see the two lithium batteries in there, plus all the instructions, anything you need on the warranties, all, that's all wired in there. And then if we go to the other side, we'll show you that this is where the inverter is. Now this here is uh, essentially the brains of the system. Now here is what we call the inverter. We use a Victron. We believe it's the top of the top of the range and it has a computer monitor here which you can scroll through by pressing this button and seeing the different settings or you can choose to look at it on your app on your phone. It's a very, I prefer the app myself but um, it's, it's up to you really. It's a Bluetooth connected to your phone but you can easily just look at it now. Now here it's saying the battery is at 100%. It's, um, it's, it's hard to, it, it sort of scrolls through, but essentially it's currently, because it's very sunny today, even though the, the tiny house is on, I have the fan on, I have the lights on, and it's plugged in, you'll see here, it's no problems. This tiny house is no problems running on this solar system while the sun's shining. So that's, that's good to see. We're gonna turn the air conditioning on in a minute too, so you'll see that, and it'll be the same. It, 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 it generates enough energy while the sun's shining, it typically maintains itself. So it's more about when it goes to nighttime, that's when you wanna start really thinking about your battery management, when, you go, when, the, when the sun goes down. During the day, you can typically do what you like, up to a maximum of 3,000 watts. So that's important to remember. So that's the output of this machine, 3,000 watts, <coughs> which is typical for all tinies. That's why we run a 15 amp circuit. Here we have a little battery charger, <coughs> and that's um, plugged in. Always leave that on the on position. This is a battery charger. Now this battery here, it's a tiny little device we have to put in to do a trickle charge on 
the automatic sol um, generator. So the automatic generator is started through uh, a battery system separate to the lithium. So that's why we have this little device here. So always leave that on, on the on position. <clears throat> and that goes the same for all the solar trailer. Just leave it on. <coughs> Excuse me, the whole time, always leave it on. It's a self-sustaining system. You do not have to touch it. So if you think, oh, I've used it for the weekend. It was a great time. Let's turn it off. Don't, don't bother. Leave it on. It needs to be circulating constantly, giving it its energy. The computer in it maintains that. So don't worry about turning it off. Just always leave it on the whole time. Of course, unless you're doing some maintenance on it. Again, if you need to do anything like that, you should ring us or a licensed electrician. We can help you out with that. Now, when the tiny house, uh, when your, your tiny house arrives, and you, um, you put your solar trailer next to it. We supply it with a 20 meter long lead. You can go longer if you'd like, so you just have to get a quote for that. Um, we, have to, we can make some custom made cables. But simply, you simply just plug it in here. It'll be in the off position, you just plug it in and you run the lead through to the, the tiny house, plug it in on their end, turn it on. Done, simple. Now we're gonna look at uh, when the solar trailer comes to site, what do you do to fix it down the ground? It's a really common question we get asked. Now my highest recommendation to you is to provide four concrete pad footings, typically 450 millimeters in diameter or square, it's fine. 400 to 500 deep is great. So if you can do that, and uh, it's gonna be the best. And I'll show you what we do with our legs. So we provide the stabilizing legs. So you'll see here, we'll just work on this one here in the front corner. So you'll have pre-done your concrete pad footings or you can wait for the tiny, uh, the sole trail to arrive. You just pull out the pin. You can then um, pull this down to the ground there and you can mark it. You're like, yep, okay, well I'll dig that and then push it back up. Do your concrete pad footing. Now we leave this hole here so you can put in either a threaded bar or a uh, diner bolt and you could bolt that down to the ground. Of course, you would put the pin in it here, that sort of thing. And then it's uh, away it goes. So there's four on each one. We also weld on these hooks. So if you want to choose to have maybe a star picket with some straps or chain down at some uh, concrete pad footing, that's also an option for you as well. So you've got this as uh, a secondary, you've got this as your primary. Uh, and then I have noticed other people putting uh, stabilizing star pickets inside and strapping it down to the core of the chassis of the trailer. Either way, I highly recommend doing a minimum of these four corner posts. Uh, this is also another great way to do it. So we'll come back to that because uh, we're going to look at uh, one, once you've stabilized it, that's, that's one thing to do. Then here we have on the inside, we, we send it out is a essentially a, uh, it's called an electrode, the mains earth electrode. You'll see it labeled here. It's just zip tied onto the side. It's very important that this is the earth stake for leakage. So once you get it to site, before you turn it on, you've got to drive this um, electrode down into the ground as far as you can. And you'll see it's got a point on it. It's very easy to do. And you just, you hammer that down into the ground. It's just a bit of a safety measure that's important to do. So once it gets to site, you secure it in the position, you throw down and hammer down your electrode, and then you're right to connect up your tiny. And that's what we do through this power point here and you'll see it running into this tiny. I'll just show you as you come to the front of the tiny house, how simple the connection is. We'll be able to answer two questions here. There's two common questions. Uh, <clears throat> this is the 15 amp inlet. So the power that we generate, which I was talking about before, 3000 watts. If you divide that by the uh, 240 volts, then you get your, your about 15 amps. So that's what's happening, that's what's coming into your tiny house. Once you plug that into your tiny house, inside there's a circuit board and it, away you go. So then you can run your power points and your lights, air conditioning, all that sort of thing. We also have an external power point on all our tinies. Typically, um, there's one here for the hot water system uh, which goes in there, but there's a spare one. So if you have other things that you need to run, say a water pump or a, um, 
Oh, some people are running different things on their properties. Some have questions about, oh, I want to do some work outside. You can run this as an external PowerPoint. Now, in our case here at the showroom, we're running a second tiny off it. No, we're not running air conditioning in that one. You cannot run two tiny houses with air conditioning on one sole trail. It's important that would be too much power consumption. But we're just simply running the lights here for display, so you, as an example. So that's, that's why we have the cable going out. It's running across to this tiny house. So yes, you can run some small appliances. You've just got to make sure in all your calculations when you're trying to figure out how much can I do, what can I use, you've got a maximum of 3,000 watts. So a very common question is somebody says, oh, they get up for breakfast, they, um, they put the toaster on, they boil the kettle, and then they blow dry the hair all at the same time, and the power cuts off. Well, those three items I just spoke about are probably the three largest energy consumers. Uh, even though it's for a short period of time, they, they absorb and uh, they consume a lot of energy in one period of time. So a toaster, um, kettle, and a hairdryer, they're, they're looking at about 2,000 watts each. So you're at about 6,000 watts, that's gonna trip the system because it's capped at 3,000. So if you're gonna live off grid, you need to throw that um, kettle away. Okay, you need to convert your thinking and lifestyle into a stovetop kettle, either on the gas cooktop. Uh, that's a much, much, much less energy consuming uh, appliance. So you have to change your kettle to a stovetop one. Uh, and with your toaster, you can do your toaster, it's not a problem because it's only a short period of time, but you just gotta make sure what else is running in the tiny house. And same with the hairdryer, consider uh, the amount of wattage you choose and what you're doing at the same time. Because normally you're only using it for very short periods of time, so it's okay, the, the system can cope with that, but not if you're doing everything at the same time, okay? So we'll go inside and we'll show you, um, like uh, as an example, because this one is powered up, this one is powered up by this solar trailer and we're running at the moment the lights, uh, the fan. I can put the, um, and I'll turn the air conditioning on for us. So you'll see there's no, it's starting up now, the cycle. When you, when you start up an air conditioner, that's when it draws its most amount of energy. These Mitsubishi electric air conditioning are super efficient but they do absorb a lot of energy at the start, in the startup. Once they've got the temperature up in the tiny house to, to what your desired temperature is, they, they sort of, um, the electrician describes it, they ramp off. They, uh, there's a spike in power and then it comes down and it stabilizes and, it's, and that's why it's so easy to run a tiny house on one of our solar trails because we use really energy efficient products, okay? So you can do air conditioning, it's certainly easier to do it during the day. And like I said, if it's in the cooler months and you're running the heating element of that, just try and do the startup during the day or when the sun is shining, you're gonna help your battery bank out a lot. It's gonna make a big difference. And if you can bring, cause these tiny houses are so well insulated, if you can bring the temperature up to your desired level during the day, it'll be able to maintain that a lot easier. So uh, that this is a tiny house functioning on a solar trailer. We've gone over the generator. It's automatic or manual, the choice is yours. You've got four panels or six. Again, the choice is yours. The reason why you'd go six is because you want the batteries to charge up faster or you have less light available to you at any given time. We're running a lithium battery bank. It's 7.1 kilowatt hours in total. So that's how much energy you have to consume. So you, if you want to know how long that lasts, you have to calculate that based on how many uh, appliances you're running. It's not something I can give you a generic answer to, oh, it'll last three hours or six hours. It just depends on so many factors because it is a solar system. It's not guaranteed power. It's actually power that's, you only get the power when the sun's shining. So it's important that if, if I sell you a solar trailer, you can't go park it in the shade. That's not gonna work. You're gonna have a really high uh, fuel bill because you're gonna be supporting your batteries with uh, running the generator. The generator there is to support the battery bank under low light conditions or during the night if you're using too much power, okay? So always remember the golden rule with solar trailers. Use the power while the sun shines. It's 
it's much, much better. Like I said earlier and I showed people, this battery bank right now is at 100% and the Tiny has been running this fan and the lights, we've now got the air conditioner on, you'll see it'll be totally fine. It'll be able to generate through the four 390 watt solar panels you know, it's just short of, uh, what is that, 1560, 1560 watts of, uh, of, of energy that it can create. They typically run at about 80, 85% uh, efficiency. So it's, it's, uh, it's probably, what's that, around uh, maybe 12 to 1400, 12 to 1400 watts you could use while the sun's shining and it's not gonna deplete your battery at all. And that's the key. That's why you should always use your power while the sun shines. Hopefully I've covered a lot of these questions. Um, uh, if you've got more, definitely email us, call us, or through Facebook or YouTube, send us some comments. We'll uh, endeavor to answer those for you, or we will do another video where I answer those questions too. So again, my name's Grant Emmons. I'm the owner of Designer Eco Tiny Homes, and uh, I hope to hear from you real soon.